Hello, and welcome to Soothing Pod's Sleep Stories. My name is Arif, and tonight I will be your guide as we embark on a journey to ancient Greece to hear the tale of Themis, the Titan Goddess. She may not be a very well-known goddess, but she played an incredibly important role in bringing peace and justice not just to the people on earth, but to the gods too. Before we travel to ancient Greece and begin our story, however, let us take a moment to relax and find comfort in the place that we are in here and now. Gently close your eyes and allow your body to sink into the mattress beneath you. Here and now, there are no responsibilities. There is no to-do list. By simply closing your eyes and listening to the sound of my voice as I guide us on this journey, You are already starting to relax and rest. Anything else you are seeking will come in time. But for now, you can simply close your eyes and allow yourself to be nourished by stillness and peace. With your eyes closed and your body sinking deeper, and deeper into the mattress beneath you. Try and turn your attention to how your body feels in bed. Feel the points where your body is in contact with the plush mattress beneath you and where the soft, comforting sheets are brushing against your skin. Notice how your bed cradles you and your blanket embraces you, tucking you in for a night of rest and relaxation. As you lie there with your eyes closed, imagine something with me for a moment. Imagine a gentle sliver of light slowly seeping through your window. Through the glass, you see what appears to be a familiar, comforting ray of moonlight. The window opens a bit, letting in a gust of cool night air. On the gust, you can smell the countryside the brisk, invigorating smell of pine trees in the far distance, the scent of dew-slicked grass and rain-soaked soil. Slowly, the silver light glides into your room through the window. As it does, it illuminates the walls around you casting them in a warm, pearly glow. The light drapes your room into a magical silver-dusted retreat of warmth and comfort. It floats around the room slowly, with grace and gentleness that puts you at complete and total ease. You follow the streaks of celestial light as they make their way through the air and cradle your body. As you observe this light, you feel warmth radiating from it. Warmth that makes your whole body relax 
even deeper into the mattress below you. Slowly, a streak of this nighttime sunshine touches your head. As it does, you feel the warmth embrace your head, shoulders, and neck, relieving any and all tension that you may have been carrying there. Tiny muscles around your mouth and cheeks and your tongue relax. Your shoulders relax, falling away from your ears. Your eyes relax, as does your jaw. Any negative thoughts that may have been spiraling in your head are gently and lovingly unraveled, leaving you with nothing but warmth and love there. The streaks of light continue their journey, moving down to your chest and torso. The warmth of light engulfs your body and even sinks down into it. You feel your breath deepen as your lungs expand and relax, allowing you to take more of that sweet, nourishing air into your body. Your heart rate slows to a steady, healthy pace, thudding peacefully in your chest. Any weight that you may feel was pressing on your chest disappears, leaving you with a sense of belonging and peace. The light touches each side of your body, gliding over your arms ever so slowly. As it does, you feel your fists unclench, your hands let go of tension lying in a comfortable position on the mattress. Any pain or discomfort you have had in any muscles or joints in your arms disappears. The light makes its way down your legs. You feel the warmth of the light as it goes over your thighs, your knees, and down your calves to your feet. Your legs have done much work for you, and now it is their time to rest. That warmth melts away any restlessness, any tension, any pain that you have felt there, leaving you with nothing but serenity. Now free of any discomfort, you watch with a smile on your face as that enchanted moonlight fills the room once more. You notice how it illuminates the walls of your room, how it paints everything in a soothing, healing light. The speckles of silver dust move toward the window, sailing out and back into the inky black night. Slowly, your window closes. You breathe in that fresh air once more, savoring the nourishment, the lovely taste of the air, the trees, the soil. Know that at any time, you can bathe in the healing, silver warmth of the moonlight. It is always within your reach, always there to provide you with comfort and reassurance whenever it is needed. Now that we have taken the time to relax and find peace, 
and comfort in the place that we are here and now. Let us travel to the beautiful lands of ancient Greece, where we will begin our story. In the beginning, even before time itself, there was nothing but primal chaos. From the chaos, Gaia, the ancestral mother of all life and the representation of Earth, emerged. She took the highest everlasting seat in Olympus, overseeing all of the immortals that would ever come into existence. Soon after her, Tartarus, the underworld, and Eros, the god of love, emerged, and then Gaia brought forth her equal, Uranus, the personification of the heavens and the skies. Together in a loving union with Uranus, Gaia gave birth to twelve titans that would change the world forever, and that would mold the earth into what it is today. Those twelve titans were powerful, incredible beings, beings who gave the earth meaning and purpose. They were Oceanus, the titan god of the sea and water, Thetis, the goddess of fresh water, Hyperion, the god of light and observation, Theia, the goddess of sight and vision, Chios, the god of resolve and intelligence, Phoebe, the goddess of bright intellect and prophecy, Crius, the god of stars and constellations, Mnemosyne, the goddess of memory, Iapetus, the god of mortal life, Cronus, the god of time and harvest, Rhea, the goddess of fertility, and, finally, Themis, the goddess of divine justice and law. Soon after Themis was born, she decided to journey down to the newly formed earth. She wanted to see the beauty of it, beauty that she knew her siblings and her parents had had a part in creating. She knew that there were humans on the earth, new beings who she had heard nothing but whispers about. And so, she decided to descend down to the earth. When her feet struck the soil on the coast of Greece for the very first time, she wanted to drop to her knees because she was in such awe of the landscape. Before her, a rocky and sandy coastline laced against crystal blue waves. It was her first time seeing something so beautiful, something that she has been hearing about from her siblings for a long, long time. She stepped across the sand, savoring the feeling of the warmth against her soft feet. The sights and sounds around her were so overwhelming, they nearly brought tears to her eyes. She watched as those cyan and turquoise waves drifted out to sea, and then journeyed back in. As they did, they lapped at her feet, sending a delightful shiver down her spine. The cool water of the Mediterranean caused a sense of relaxation and peace to wash over her body. 
She stood there for a long time, soaking in the rhythm of the ocean and finding comfort in it. She loved the way the sunlight sparkled on the waves, the noises the waves made as they drifted out to sea and then crashed against the shore, smearing a layer of bubbles and foam across the golden sand. She could hear the popping of the bubbles, the scuttling of crabs, the whoosh of the current as it was swept out to sea and every single noise put a smile on her face. She never imagined the world would be full of such beauty, of such complete immersion. She felt like nature was embracing her, welcoming her to this world with open arms. She continued to walk along gazing at the sun's golden rays on those deep blue waves. Overhead, birds dove towards the water and sang their song to the universe, filling it with music and melody. When Themis spotted a feather, she bent down to take hold of it brushing her fingers over the softness of it in awe. She was a being of extreme knowledge about the world, but seeing it and feeling it was entirely different than being born with knowledge about it. Soon, Themis found herself wandering away from the gorgeous, glistening coastline towards the forest. The aroma of trees, loam, and flourishing plants filled her with a sense of comfort and belonging. She breathed them in deeply, delighted by how nourished she felt with every breath she took. She walked underneath branches in the forest. Sunlight filtered through the leaves, painting the forest floor, the moss, and Themis herself with patches of shadows and light. Birds flitted from branch to branch, singing their joyous song and chatting with each other as they made their way through the world. Themis watched them glide through the trees, admiring their beauty and strength. But soon, bird songs weren't the only things that Themis heard. In the distance, she could hear talking and it wasn't her titan siblings. She followed the noise, knowing in her heart what it was. She had heard of the humans that had begun populating the earth. They were new beings, entirely new, and very little was known about how they made their way through the world. Themis reached the edge of the woods. Before her, in a cozy, peaceful clearing, there was a village. Tiny, simple homes had been constructed by the humans. Homes with not just the bare necessities, but bits of creativity, bits of life and love. There were simple decorations hanging from the windows and carvings that were done by hand to add some artistic value to the world. Themis was pleased to see these, to see that the humans were making the most of the life they were given. 
that is, until she saw that they weren't entirely peaceful. Humans emerged from the woods on the other side of the clearing, and to Themis's surprise, they were arguing with one another. It appeared that they were arguing over a fish one of the humans had caught. Another human tried to grab it, claiming that it was theirs. Soon, a selfish struggle broke out. The humans thrashed and fought with one another, using violence to try and keep the fish for themselves. Themis watched on in shock. With the Titans, she was the goddess that put everything in order. She was the goddess that knew right from wrong, that knew what was just, that knew how to preserve and uphold the laws of the universe. She made sure that things were fair and that everyone was conducting themselves with kindness and understanding. But what was she seeing humans do? It was nothing of the sort. There was no justice here, no morality between the humans. They were so new and so lost on their earth that they acted on their selfish desires only thinking of themselves and their selfish way to survival. Themis could not stand for such actions. Something deep inside her, that sense of morality and justice, would not allow her to let something so terrible take place. And so, she acted she emerged from the woods. The mere sight of her put the fighting humans on edge. She was a tall, heavenly-looking being, a woman wearing a blindfold and carrying a scale in one hand. She was unlike anything they had ever seen before and it was clear that they were not only scared of her, but they were in awe of her. They knelt before her, giving themselves up to the goddess. She spoke to them in her commanding, serious voice, telling the humans about how wrong their behavior was. She told them that whoever caught the fish was entitled to it, that stealing was never acceptable, and that there was no honor in taking another person's food. Feeling guilty and seeing the wrongness of his actions, the man who stole the fish gave it back to the fisherman apologizing as he did so. He told the goddess he had no idea that his actions were wrong, that he had never meant to do such a thing. It was then that Themis saw how truly misguided the humans were. They had no morals, no guidance. They did not know right from wrong. Being so tied to justice, so tied to her quest to preserve the law and order of things, Themis could not step away. She knew she had to guide the early humans. She had to teach them right from wrong. And so, she did just that. She began on her quest, on her long journey. She traveled through Greece on foot, taking in the scenery and giving mortals laws to live by. 
in each new town she visited, she called upon the people to gather round. She told them that she was a titan, a goddess, and that her world was the law. She encouraged them to live by the rules she gave them, rules that were simple and good. She told them not to steal, not to harm one another, not to take credit for others' work, not to be prideful, not to take advantage of other people. In addition, she told the people how to make proper offerings to the gods. Most of the people clung to her words and laws enthusiastically, thrilled to finally have some information to help them make sense of the world, thrilled to finally have some kind of guidance, any kind of guidance. Themis's journey was a long one. At night, she would often set up camp beneath a tree. She would listen to the whistle of the wind winding through the trees, of the grass swaying, of the leaves dancing overhead. She would listen to the sound of the crickets, the soundscape of a peaceful night. And as she soaked in the beauty of the landscape and of the inky black sky overhead, she couldn't help but smile. She was helping bring order to this world. She was making this world better. There was nothing that was going to stop her on this quest. There was truly nothing more important. Not only was Themis the goddess of law, justice, and order, she also had a gift that many of her siblings had as well. She was a soothsayer, able to predict the future able to receive messages about what was to come. As a woman of justice and law, Themis knew that she could not keep these abilities to herself. There was no justice in keeping the future from the people around her. As such, she set out to create something that would aid the gods forever. Atop a hill in the town of Delphi, Themis began to construct a temple, a temple for the Oracle of Delphi. It was a simple yet divine temple, a temple that looked down over the countryside and commanded the vista, reminding those below that there was guidance guidance that came from above. Themis hoped that this would bring more peace and comfort to the mortals of the world, as well as the gods above. It didn't take long for those early humans to gather around the temple, seeking advice and leaving offerings. Themis was delighted to see that the mortals were following the instructions she had given. They were giving proper offerings to the gods. However, not everyone was following the laws that Themis had given. It didn't take long for her to witness mortals stealing from one another. Her heart sank at the sight. She was somewhat angry, disappointed, and confused. She had told the humans how to act according to justice and order, and they were disobeying that. 
preferring to live a life of dishonor and chaos. By following their selfish desires, they were making the world a darker and a less just place for everyone, and Themis simply could not have that. She felt no shame and no hesitation in what she decided to do next. Themis approached Nemesis, the goddess of retribution against those who succumb to hubris and arrogance. Though it would seem the things they oversaw were completely different, in reality, they needed to exist together. Themis told Nemesis of the problem she was having. Mortals were beginning to disobey the laws when it benefited them, no matter how it affected those around them. Themis could not allow this to go on in the just world she was trying to create and it was Nemesis that she knew could fix it. Nemesis smiled upon her and thanked her for coming to her. She would gladly set the mortals straight when they disobeyed the divine laws that Themis had given them. Themis and Nemesis worked in their roles like this for quite some time. They ensured that their divine laws were being followed, and in turn, humanity slowly started to improve. But soon, the roles of the titans in the world would decrease when war between the Titans and the Olympians broke out, Themis knew what the outcome would be long before anyone else. She spoke little as the war came, aware that there was little she could do to change the fate that was falling upon the Titans. Soon, it became clear that the Olympians were to be the new rulers of the world. Zeus led the Olympians in the war, and it didn't take long for them to be victorious. This was long before many of the later Olympians were even born, and long before Hera and Zeus were wed. Even someone as strong and stubborn as Zeus needed guidance in a world as new as theirs. And so, he turned to Themis. While many of the Titans' roles had been replaced by Olympians, Themis was not. She was the goddess of justice and it was a hard role to take over. Zeus spoke with Themis, wanting her assistance in ensuring the world stayed strong and just. Themis guided him, helping him pass the rules of life onto the other Olympians and helping the Olympians ensure that they were holding the humans to those same standards. Through this process, Zeus gradually found himself falling in love with Themis. She was a strong woman, a woman who understood the world more deeply than he himself did. Not that he was one to ever admit that. When she spoke of the world, of truth and justice and fairness, he found himself mesmerized by her. He could always feel her passion for justice and divine order. He could see her desire to lead the world 
to a place of positivity, a place of tranquility, where everything was balanced and justice was always had. She wanted people to be the best that they could be. And truthfully, it made Zeus want to be the best that he could be. One day, as they spoke of some actions of the humans in the nearby town, Themis got visibly emotional. She was proud of how well the humans had been doing lately, of how much they had grown since they had begun to form a world of justice and order together. It was in that moment of emotion, in that moment of passion, that Zeus knew he had to wed Themis. He took her hand gently in his and gazed at her deeply, with a kind of love that Themis had never experienced before. He asked her if she would be his bride. Themis agreed, still overcome with emotion. She was not a woman who fell in love, but she was a woman who loved the earth and the people on it, and she knew marrying Zeus would unite them in a goal to make a better world. She knew that with Zeus by her side, they could work together to make that a reality. And they did just that. For dozens and dozens of years, Zeus and Themis spent long hours together, trying to make the world just. They watched the humans and the gods, ensuring that they were conducting themselves in a proper manner. And when the humans and gods were not, Nemesis would fulfill her role and show them the consequences of their actions. Themis was happy, deeply, truly happy. She was doing what she had been born on this earth to do. She was doing what she had always dreamt of. With every passing day, the world seemed to be becoming more balanced and fair. But, of course, those times of peace always come in waves. As the population of humans grew, war began to break out amongst them. There were many people, and though there was an abundance of resources, greed always seemed to get in the way. Nemesis was working like she hadn't ever before, and Themis was worn down by the demand for justice and order. She and Zeus grew apart. Zeus was more concerned with his need for power than his need for a good world, and it drove Themis away. Though their relationship and love for one another may have faded, their respect for one another never waned. Even as Zeus moved on and married Hera, he often requested Themis' counsel, needing her assistance to guide him in his decision-making. And Themis was pleased with this. She never used her role to accumulate power. She had never truly wanted a seat on Mount Olympus. Nor had she desired any place in the politics of the Olympians. She was perfectly content doing her work on the sidelines with Nemesis, stepping in whenever people needed a reminder 
of morality and justice. She spent many of her days in Delphi, or in the cozy home she had made on a mountain of her own. From the mountain, she could gaze down into the towns and villages below and soak in the beauty of the world. She especially liked to observe the acts of kindness between humans, the light that ignited in their eyes when they treated each other well and loved one another. Some days, she would sit outside with a steaming cup and watch just that. She'd admire the kindness of the children below, the way they always gave to one another and shared their emotions so freely, the way they wanted what was best for each other and the world. It was never about power, never about control, never about gaining anything from one another. They simply loved and wanted everyone to be happy. Themis could relate deeply to that, and every time she consulted with the Olympians, she had that in mind. She was happy living her days on the outskirts, only stepping in when fairness and justice had been violated, and ensuring that each day was brighter than the last for humanity. I hope you have enjoyed this sleep story, and it has brought you a night of peaceful, relaxing sleep. Please, join me again tomorrow night for another sleep story. Until then, sweet dreams. <laughs>